Hi guys, and welcome back to Retro Room. I've got a few things that I'm working on to be uploaded next week, but I'm still in the research stage on that, so um, that is forthcoming. But I noticed that the channel has got uh, over 200,000 views, and as I've been going through the last week and reading through all the comments that I've missed out on the last couple of months, I saw a couple of questions that were coming up over and over again, so I wanted to address those uh, before I move on and move ahead with other videos. Uh, the first question that I'm getting a lot of is what happened to Nelson's friend Liz Lizard? Um, from my understanding, um, after her time with Nelson, she still went on, she was still in photography, um, she still worked as a photographer, but as for what she has been up to lately, um, there's really not that much information. Um, I have seen several people uh, point out that they have seen a Facebook account for her, um, which I have checked out as well. Uh, but because she doesn't seem to be very active on the account and because I haven't seen anything of her publicly, um, it's not something that I feel really comfortable at this point uh, pointing out to everyone. Um, it seems like she may want to be just a regular person out of the spotlight for now. Um, that being said, if I do find something um, like an interview she has done or anything like that, I will definitely share that with you guys. Um, the second question, probably the one that gets asked the most, is do I know what happened to Nelson's dog, Blackout, after he passed away? Um, I do think I do know what happened to him. I don't have the source material, and I can't really remember where it came from, uh, but if I can find that, I will just upload it in another video for you. But my understanding is that after Nelson passed away, RuPaul moved into 5 Ninth Avenue um, with Larry T and Lahoma, who were still living there. And they kept Blackout with them at that house until he passed away about a year later. So he lived for about a year after Nelson passed, and he stayed at 5 Ninth Avenue with Lahoma, Larry T, and RuPaul. Again, I'm not sure. I couldn't tell you where I've heard that from. It, it could have been from Robert Coddington, or it could have been from somewhere else. Um, I will have to go back and actually look and see if I can find that. But if I can, I will do it in a video. And... Um, give you all the further details that I know about that. But I think that's what happened to Blackout, was he basically stayed where he was and spent the last year of his life in the same house. Um, the other question I'm getting a lot is, do I know any of the club kids uh, personally? And the answer to that is no. I don't know any of them. Like, I haven't met any of them. Um, I haven't hung out with any of them or anything like that. I've communicated with several of them. Um, over text message, um, over the email, and through the YouTube channel, through the comment section. Um, so I have dialogued with them, but never in person. I don't know any of them personally. I'm not friends with any of them. Uh, I'm just uh, someone who's doing a YouTube channel uh, basically on them, and I've gotten some feedback, uh, some good, some bad, and um, uh, I've talked to a few of them, not all of them, um, but like I said, I don't know any of them personally. Um, I've spoken to Michael Alec uh, a couple of times through email, through the YouTube channel. Um, I did reach out to him a couple of months ago. I wanted to explore the idea of possibly doing an interview with him because uh, there were some questions that I had specifically about Project X magazine and uh, the status of the relationships between him and several of the other club kids that I've communicated with. And I wanted to kind of get his take on that. Um, I didn't hear back from him. I know he's got a lot going on. Um, so I guess that's a kibosh for the time being. But um, um, I did uh, text him. I wanted to set that up. But, um, as to, uh, but as far as things are right now, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Uh, I know that a couple of you have reached out on my behalf to Ernie Glam as well for the possibility of having a dialogue. Um, I haven't heard anything back from that either. Uh, now, I know that they already have their own platform. They have the Pew, which probably has seven to eight times the audience that this channel does. So they really don't need me to publicize anything for them. They don't need me to expand their audience. Uh, talking to me wouldn't really help that at all, because probably most of the people who watch this channel are already subscribed to the Pew. So I understand that. They've got their own thing going on. They've got their own media. 
um, and they've got their own way to communicate with their fans. Um, I just thought that um, talking to me would allow for them to go into more in depth into some of the questions that I know a lot of the viewers have because I hear that on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, they do answer some questions, uh, club kid questions, questions about personalities from time to time on their show. Um, but I think like a 20, 30 minute sit down with them would have been uh, pretty eye-opening in terms of the information that we could have got. So, um, but I've talked to a couple of them. There's a couple other people that I want to approach, see if they might be willing to um, have a talk with me on this channel. But um, I've got a lot to catch up on before I actually start trying to approach people for possible interviews or um, phone calls or things like that. So um, I did actually get some positive feedback. I got a comment from Michael Tron, uh, I think a couple of weeks ago. Um, he responded to the video that I made about him and he uh, basically told me that I did him justice. So um, I'm very happy that he was happy with that and I was very happy to um, get the comment from him because um, uh, that makes me feel pretty good about what I'm doing. Uh, it hasn't always been positive. Most of it's been positive. Um, some people don't like uh, me doing videos on them. Some people don't want to be associated any longer with club kids. Um, so that's kind of my hesitation as far as if someone's out of the public eye, um, how much should I really dig for information about them? Uh, but that being said, um, if you were in the public eye in the past, um, all of that stuff, I believe, is fair game. So, but it was nice to hear from Michael Tron, and um, um, I've also talked to several others as well. And then um, the other question that I get is, um, what do I take the most heat for? Is there anything specifically um, that's caused me a lot of problems in terms of any of the videos that I've done? Um, I've done about 175 uploads on this channel. Um, I get a lot of heat for really anything that I do with Michael Alec. Uh, that's to be expected because he's a controversial figure. Um, but that's when I get attacked personally the most. Uh, people tell me that I'm insane or uh, mentally ill or, you know, the whole gambit of things that you would say to someone that you are very unimpressed with. And I can understand the point. Uh, he's obviously been convicted of a crime, so there are people that are not going to like him, and that's understandable. Um, but doing a channel about a subculture, uh, Club Kids and Nelson Sullivan, it would be ridiculous for me to ignore Michael Alec and to refuse to cover anything on him. So um, I get a lot of heat for that. Um, a lot of other heat I get from uh, some of the Christina videos. Uh, a lot of people don't understand uh, what's my deal with Christina. Like, am I obsessed? Um, Am I like, why am I so interested in her? And um, I just find her fascinating. I think that it's very interesting to see the old videos of her. And um, I just find the personality interesting. We've obviously talked about here multiple times that she had a mental disorder, that she suffered from mental illness. Um, she was uh, schizophrenic, untreated. And um, so that's one element to it. I do have um, experience having mental illness in my family. So that might be part of the reason why I find it interesting. And I also just find the idea um, of someone living um, a trans life back in the 80s in New York City, where it was extremely dangerous to do so, um, it took a lot of guts. So I think Christina was definitely a very severe, very interesting personality. And plus the fact that we really don't know what happened to her, aside from the information that we can get from the videos uploaded, uh, by Five Ninth Avenue Project, by Nelson Sullivan, and what the people who knew her say. But um, what they all say kind of varies depending on whom you're talking to. So um, that's really a lot of the reason why I find her so interesting. Um, also, I do uh, root for the underdog and to watch the videos and to see how poorly uh, people treated Christina um, just made me, I think, uh, subconsciously uh, root for her even more. So that's the deal with Christina. Um, I actually was trying to put out a mini documentary on Christina on my YouTube channel. I'd been working on it for um, several months, but it was just, I think, uh, too big of a project for me at the time. Um, I bit off more than I could chew with that. So that's kind of on hold for right now, also because I've come to a dead end in terms of what information I can find out about her. Um, I haven't been able to find out anything new for at least several months. So it's kind of on the back burner for now. I've got some other things that I'm going to be working on going forward and um, hopefully uh, sometime in the future I can get back to that with a few more answers and actually 
uh, put something together. But that's something that I'm looking forward to as well. And then um, what's coming up? Like, what am I doing with the channel? Am I doing uh, anything new with it? Um, I think it's going to be pretty much status quo. Um, I think I might add something to it maybe every once in a while where I do like a vlog type thing, just talk about uh, random stuff. But I think mostly it's going to be the same. I think uh, what I might also do is actually start looking into uh, the scene, the club scene in the UK, specifically London. I know there's a couple of you who are interested in that and I'm kind of interested in it too. So I might do something like that as well. Um, I also happen to know that um, somebody is shopping around a Nelson Sullivan documentary. So that is not a for sure thing from my understanding at this point, but it is definitely a possibility. So um, I'm really hoping that goes forward. I think that would be great. I would love to see a uh, documentary on Nelson Sullivan and just think of the amount of footage that we would get to see um, in a documentary like that, possibly footage that we have not yet seen so far. So um, I'm definitely looking forward to hopefully seeing a Nelson Sullivan documentary in the next year or two. That's obviously not my channel, it has nothing to do with me, but um, it is something that I've heard kind of going around a little bit and hopefully that actually happens. So I think that's pretty much it. Um, I think that was most of the questions that I, I saw, at least anyway, uh, that people were asking. Um, if I didn't get to your question, you can ask it again in the section below here and I will do another video at some point and either address it that way or I will just make a video on it and upload it that way. But um, I want to thank you guys for watching. Um, I'm kind of on a time crunch here, so I'm definitely, I need to get this done and out um, and then I can do a bit more research on the stuff that I have upcoming. But um, I definitely wanted to put something up uh, as soon as possible because it's been a while since I've been uploading regularly. So thanks, you guys. Uh, thanks for all the views and everything. I appreciate it. And I will see you again real soon. Uh, have a great day.